Thank you, Ingeborg. Um, actually, uh, I have to start explaining something important. In the early 90s, uh, uh, Zagreb is one of the very first place where I went to give talk out of France, thanks to Ingeborg who invited me to Zagreb. And uh, uh, I, I think, of course, I will never, uh, I, I will never uh, uh, forget uh, this amazing experience. Uh, it was a kind of uh, intense time. Uh, it was uh, also uh, in the middle of the war. Uh, so uh, that's what kind of totally weird uh, experience. Uh, and exciting at the same time because I met a lot of uh, interesting people. And um, of course, when you come from places that are supposed to be preserved uh, for more for uh, decades, uh, that that was something totally unexpected. Uh, and you have to think about what are the priorities in life uh, and these projects. A uh, value of values uh, is uh, a project that uh, is based on the question of uh, human values. And so human values are about what is important to us and how we rank uh, the main values for the people around the world. And um, this is what uh, makes this project uh, a bit specific. So I may share if, if I can. So um, oh, of course I did some things before, uh, but uh, in uh, something like uh, uh, 2014, 15, I started to work on a project called Brain Factory. And the Brain Factory is based on a conceptual uh, vision of the world where well, uh, we are uh, we are in the middle of uh, a kind of a cyclone uh, where uh, two trends uh, dominate our vision of uh, uh, our relation to the world. One is what I call sublimation, uh, which is a conversion of the of the world into data. And the other is reification, which is conversion of the thoughts into matter and objects. And so, uh, of course, I could get into details if you want me to go deeper into that. But of course, there is a kind of ambiguity uh, as sublimation means we convert everything first to uh, money, atoms, and then, and then, and then binary code. Uh, which is uh, uh, a kind of alchemy uh, where uh, we, uh, we try to dematerialize the world and reification is we try to materialize the thoughts and, and what happens in our mind um, with a, a kind of uh, uh, nuance that comes from the Marxist uh, theory uh, where uh, we convert everything in material and, and our values uh, into objects that can be uh, traded, that can be uh, and they can be uh, converted into commodities. And so this is uh, all about this uh, ambiguous situation we are in the middle of. And um, Okay, uh, this, this become of course clear when we talk about the project itself. And so uh, let's say usually the project is based on the fact that uh, the public is invited to become, uh, to use an EEG headset, uh, which is actually a electroencephalography tool uh, that captured the, the brain waves. And this help us to interact uh, using a biofeedback system, uh, brain to um, uh, BCI, 
uh, brain computer interaction and where we uh, may contribute to control the evolution of a shape that is actually a resulting of, um, of forces and particles. You will understand better what it is. So the original project was the brain factory where uh, after giving shape to human abstractions, uh, we uh, could 3D print them like here freedom uh, and, and give shape to different human abstraction uh, just by thinking. And so we make them become objects uh, that uh, can be traded. And this is what comes after. But what evolved in the last two years, uh, it's a value of values, uh, which is actually uh, a project based on the blockchain, where uh, the result of our, the process of give, giving shape to human values uh, is uh, actually uh, becoming what we call NFTs, uh, tokens, non-fungible tokens. And uh, so people can start trading human values on, on the blockchain. And this, uh, of course, help us to understand what is ranking of values, like what is ranking of uh, the stock exchange, what is ranking of uh, everything we value in general, and um, this, we do it on online. Uh, so there is um, a short video where we understand how finance uh, fight with ethics in order to make uh, transactional art on the blockchain. So this project is made together with Tobias, Tobias Klein with an architect and, uh, and uh, associate professor at the uh, School of Creative Media, and Nicolas Mendoza, who is also uh, a doctor uh, coming from also the School of Creative Media, and who has been working on uh, blockchain technology in relation to uh, amulet, tie amulets and blockchain. So that's a... Uh, uh, and one of the starting points of this interpretation. So that's a video that you may discover, I guess, on the screen you have. And you see that we start by using, we start by using EG headband, a very standard one, a very commercial one. And people uh, here in the, the show in Taipei, Mocha Taipei, the Museum of Contemporary Art during the Digital Art Festival in Taipei in 2019, where people gave shape here to uh, space. And it's uh, something very challenging to give us a shape to space. So the visitors of the show, the, the public is becoming actually brain workers and they contribute by uh, agreeing or disagreeing by expressing yes and no uh, to the evolution of human values. So they see the value like justice here, space, and so on, and they orient the evolution like a, a, a living, living form. Oh. And so at the end of the process, after eight minutes, you get a QR code, and this QR code, uh, you can, uh, on your uh, web app, uh, you can trade it. You can start swap it uh, for other values like here with the happiness, 740, uh, where uh, somebody asked to convert it into art, democracy, and fame. Or you can give it to somebody, or you can sell it or buy it. And of course, all this is very important in the meaning of the project. So the transactional poetry is what happens when you do swapping. So when you swap values, for example, happiness and art, it automatically generates a sentence, a statement of purity and trust uh, that is 
actually coming from the your effective transaction. So for example, uh, it can be you always need more money to find love. And uh, on the website, you can, you can see it. So it's a vov.art. You can see the ranking of values, the reactive value of values, the evolution of the values. And you know exactly what people are ready to pay for each human values. But you can also see how cities and countries uh, rank their values. Uh, in the future, we plan to create the periodic table of values where scientists will put together values, the proximity of values according to how they are collected by people. But uh, of course, they can also become not only 3D models, but also uh, characters, uh, graphic characters that can be interpreted or uh, read by the reader and the reader try to see the similarity with uh, existing characters in different languages. Uh, and then these uh, worlds that are been, have been generated uh, by the, the machine uh, can be interpreted uh, and become um, philosophical quotes by the interpreter. At the end of the process, so what you have produced may be converted into a physical object like scrolls, for example, for the black and white thing, or even uh, fashion design, where you claim the values uh, on your clothes, and uh, we plan a show like that soon. And, and also you can decide that purity will become an inflatable sculpture. And so the model you get becomes uh, an artwork. And so here is the footprint of freedom, and this is this is a democracy uh, coming from Honeycomb, and here is a, a, the big verificator. Well, uh, it would take longer to explain what the big verificator do, and I'm not sure I can I can explain it now. So what you see. Uh, when, uh, when you see this is uh, what some people call global art, uh, where you combine different perspectives like neuroscience, culture, 3D graphics, music, design, poetry, and economics. But also the, the, the public becomes artist, curator, collector, art dealer, and trader. And uh, the work itself is made of a virtual society of agents uh, that include a generator, calligrapher, uh, printer, reader, interpreter, scientist, analyst, accountant, poet, and probably many other things. And so there are projects that came out also out of that, like uh, here, the Brain Cloud, uh, two years ago, this was uh, the launching of Value of Values uh, at the Arts Center Abbey in Seoul, where we invited the media uh, and the creators to come and appreciate uh, when uh, the VOV tokens became so-called NFTs. Uh, it was in June 2090s. And here it was in uh, ICR 2000. Uh, 19 as well in Guangzhou, uh, where people could do the full process. And here is Macerata in Italy, uh, where uh, it was in Palazzo Buena Corsi, uh, where it, it was a very small space uh, and uh, it was surrounded by mirrors, so we could see traditional paintings around, and this was in the Mocha Taipei where we had a, a big installation with three uh, stations. Uh, and you could see the transactional poetry projected behind, uh, and uh, people could work on different models at the same time. This was the opening thing. And, uh, and, and then what you see when you see the 2Ds, is the 3D model you get, because at the end of the process, uh, you get a token which becomes yours, so it's an NFT, 
and you can give a shape to this token uh, by different ways. So it can become a 2D, which is a, a 2D model, a 3D, or it can become an art installation like it was mentioned in the video. So this is uh, what I did. I did a series of them from my collection. And this one, they are 2D, so they're very, uh, very simple thing done with very simple tools uh, using the 3D model. So this is art, this is beauty, this is democracy, this is fame, this is compassion, this is anarchy flying over trust, and this became the cover of a book by uh, Siren Johnston uh, that uh, uh, about uh, uh, about blockchain and about decentralized finance. And this is family, uh, and you, I'm sure you can project yourself to interpret how this can be family. And this is freedom, and I, I don't know. I don't have to explain anything about that. This is friendship, and this is equality. This is happiness. This is honesty. This is humor. This is intelligence, 673. And this is justice, 683. This is power, 573. This is knowledge, 363. I can tell you why it's three at the end. There is a reason. And this is kindness. This is money. This is anarchy, and this is sex, of course. And so I, I show you that we imagine with uh, Tobias Klein uh, that uh, you could get a purity model that would become an inflatable sculpture that you decide to present as an installation in a show. Uh, and this is a footprint of freedom, uh, which is a, a way to say that freedom is uh, actually as vanished uh, like dinosaurs. And the only way we have to know freedom is to see the footprint left by the shape that is not anymore there. Democracy out of honeycomb. And, and uh, uh, I think the big reificator uh, that is at the origin of the project is a 3D printer that converts the abstraction into, uh, into uh, a concrete. So from abstract to concrete, uh, we get a sculpture that is printed out, out of the models that people create on the station, of the no design station. And uh, when the model is completed, it rains on it and it becomes sand again because we don't use cement to create the concrete, we use starch. And so when it rains on it, uh, the starch goes with the water and it becomes sand. So this is typically what we call a vanity in art history. And so this project has been supported by a lot of programs, uh, mind spaces, a start program, uh, it's supported by CDU, by ACIM, School of Creative Media, Neo Design Lab, and many other organizations, including Osage Art Foundation, that uh, uh, actually is planning a big tour of all this work. I should also say that presently, there is a show with a station in Sofia, in Bulgaria, uh, uh, that um, at a uh, uh, Credo Bonum gallery, and there is a show in Le Bel Ordinaire uh, for the Access Festival in Po in the south of France, and both of them are trying to interact with people who create new tokens, and also help us to collect more data about what is the vision of human values from different places around the world. So that's uh, what the project is about. 